Hello, this is Seema. Welcome to part 2 of the video Bohr's model for hydrogen atom. I just explained the postulates to you. So now let us see what according to Bohr was his theory for the hydrogen atom. The first point here is that Bohr said that stationary states, that these energy levels or stationary states, they are numbered. And these numbers were the first energy state, which was closest to the nucleus, the second energy state, the third energy state, the fourth energy state. So he called them, these numbers were represented by N and they were 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. Later, in the quantum mechanical model, this particular uh, postulate or this idea was adopted and the first quantum number is known as the, the principal quantum number tells you about the energy states. And that also is N, 1, 2, 3. We'll come to that in a later video. The second point was that the radii of these stationary states, I told you that the stationary states or the energy of an electron is not fixed, it's quantized and therefore the angular momentum is also quantized. Therefore electrons can only be present at certain radii around the nucleus and that's why we have these fixed energy states. So he said that the radii of these energy states are fixed and therefore the electron can only be present at certain distances from the nucleus. He gave a formula for the radius. The radius was Rn, that is radius of an orbit, that is n. The orbit could be 1, 2, 3, where n is the principal quantum number. So n is the orbit. So the radius of an orbit would be equal to n square, that is square of the number of that orbit, into a value a0. This value a0 he calculated was equal to 52.9 picometers. So this value, this is the minimum. In other words, if you have the first orbit, what would be the radius of the first orbit? The radius of the first orbit would be equal to, if n square is 1 square, it would be the value of a0, which is 52.9 picometers. In other words, in hydrogen, the smallest, the first orbit or the first stationary state, the first energy level has a radius of 52.9 picometers around the nucleus. The next point he gave was that the energy of a stationary state of any orbit, that was also fixed and it could be calculated. What was the formula of this? The energy of any energy state, that is n, any value of n would be equal to minus Rh1 upon n square. It was minus Rh1 upon n square, where n again is the number of the orbit and Rh was known as the Rydberg's constant. Rh was known as the Rydberg's constant and n is the value of the shell. So the Rydberg's constant has a fixed value, just as A0 had a fixed value, Rydberg's constant has a value of 2.18 into 10 to the power minus 18 joules because it's a fixed quantity of energy. So you can calculate the values, the energy of the first energy, first stationary state would be equal to 2.18 into 10 to the power minus 18 joules into 1 upon 1 square, which is this only. So the energy of the first energy level or the first state where quantum number n is equal to or the, uh, the first uh, energy level is uh, 1. Therefore, the energy would be E1 would be equal to minus 2.18 into 10 to the power minus 18 joules. Why is there a negative value to this, uh, to this energy? The reason for this is that uh, when you assume an electron to be so far away from the nucleus that the nucleus has no attraction for the electron, we say the electron is now out of the atom. At that point, we say the electron is at infinity. If it is at infinity from the nucleus because it's not, uh, it is not being affected, it's not being attracted by the nucleus, so we say the energy of an electron for that atom at that point is zero. Since the energy of electron is zero at infinity, any distance less than that, 
the electron loses energy. Why does it lose energy? Because the closer an electron comes to an atom, the more uh, to the nucleus, the more stable the atom becomes. Electrons that are closest to the, it's like a magnet and a nail. The nail would try to come closest to the magnet. So the electron which is a negative charge and the nucleus which is positively charged, the closer an electron is to the nucleus, the more stable it is. And when is stability attained? When energy is lost. When there's too much energy, atoms, electrons, they jump about. So when, when does it get stable? When it loses energy. So as the electron comes closer or comes to shells which are closer and closer to the nucleus, they lose energy. And since the energy at infinite distance is zero, any energy closer than that would be a negative value. That's why you have a negative value to these energies. Anyway, the fourth point now was that the Bohr's theory is also applicable to isoelectronic species. Bohr, he gave his atomic theory only for hydrogen atom. That is an atom which has only one electron. But the other elements in the periodic table are helium, lithium, beryllium, boron. So helium, if it loses, it has two electrons and two protons. So if helium loses one electron, it becomes, it also has only one electron left now. So it is isoelectronic with hydrogen. Since hydrogen has one electron, helium positive also has one electron. But there's a difference between helium and hydrogen. Hydrogen, helium has two protons too in the nucleus, but hydrogen has only one proton. Since there is a stronger positive charge in helium, it will attract the electron even more towards itself. So its first energy level, it's like the magnet, a stronger magnet will attract the nail more. So if there's only one electron and two protons, the nucleus is, has a stronger force of attraction for the electron and hence its first energy level will be closer than that of hydrogen. Similarly, it's just simple logic. Lithium has three electrons. If it loses three electrons, it now has only one electron, becomes isoelectronic with hydrogen, but now in the nucleus it has three protons, so they have a stronger pull. But, but the Bohr's model or the theory can be explained for all these isoelectronic species. Beryllium, four protons, four electrons, so when it loses three electrons, it becomes isoelectronic with hydrogen. And then the Bohr's model or the, these equations are applicable to them also, but you have to take into consideration the, the added positive charge. So that is in terms of its atomic number. Why? Because according to their atomic number, they have the, num the number of protons is the atomic number. So what would the energy of the shell be in case of these isoelectronic species? We have to take into consideration the number of protons. So the formula is just changed a little. It is the energy is Rh, which is 2.18 into 10 to the power minus 18, 1 upon n square. Here is 1. It was in the case of hydrogen, it was 1 because it has only one proton or one electron. But for helium, the value of Z, that is, it would be 2, where Z is the number of protons or the atomic number. So it would be 2 for lithium, it will be 3 for beryllium, it would be 4. And therefore you can calculate the energy as E would be equal to minus 2.18, that is Rh, into Z square upon N square J, where N is the energy level and Z is the is the uh, atomic number or the number of protons. Similarly, the formula for the radius also has to take into consideration the number of protons or the attraction of the nucleus. Therefore, this also changes where it was n squared a naught. This becomes n squared a naught upon z, where z is the atomic number. So, which would be equal to 52. The value of a naught is 52.9 and n is the number of the shell and z is the atomic number. So, this could be the, the general formula for all isoelectronic species with hydrogen. The last point to explain here is that the velocity of electron, the electron that is revolving in the orbits, the velocity of that electron, it increases with the increase in positive charge. It's natural. If the positive charge is stronger, if the 
magnet is stronger, the nail moves faster towards the magnet. It is somewhat similar. The energy of the velocity of the electrons increases with increased positive charge in the nucleus and it decreases with increase of the shell. Why? Because the larger the shell, the more distant is the electron and lesser is the attraction by the nucleus. The more is the influence of the nucleus, the faster an electron moves. The further away it moves, the influence of the nucleus decreases and the slower is its velocity. Right? So these were the, this was the explanation of the Bohr's uh, model for hydrogen atom. Now, in the next video, we are going to do how the Bohr's model explained the line spectrum of hydrogen. Then we'll solve a few numerical problems and then we do the drawbacks of Bohr's model and finally that would lead us to the present model of an atom which is the quantum mechanical model. Thank you for watching. Please leave your comments if you have any queries and subscribe to my channel and like the video. Thank you.